Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to weave chainmail into a pattern called Celtic Visions. Here I have some variations of it. It is very similar in construction to helm weave, um, but I think I can show you better than talk about it, so let's get started. <laughs> There are a lot of different ring sizes and aspect ratios that you can weave this with, but here I am using 16 gauge 5 sixteenths, um, oh, bright aluminum, sorry, <laughs> brain farted, um, and then here I have 18 gauge 3 sixteenths bright aluminum. There will be links to all the different tools and materials that I'm using in this video in the video description below, so be sure to check that out. Now here's an example of one segment of the Celtic Visions. Now there can be a lot of modifications made on this design. Here you can see I've doubled up on this horizontal ring along that center point. You can also do this with a couple of different ring sizes like fluctuating to make it look more like ribbony a little bit, like it'll be undulating in thickness. But what we'll do is we're going to start with having quite a few of the 16 gauge 5 16 rings closed and then quite a few of the 18 gauge 3 16 open. From here, just for simplicity's sake, I am going to call these the large rings and these the small rings. Also, this can, design can be very easily done with um, the EPDM rubber rings. Because with these guys, the larger rings being closed anyways, there's no reason why you couldn't incorporate a rubber ring in their place. It's also a wonderful opportunity to incorporate um, very vibrant anodized aluminum or different metal tones. Just whatever suits your tastes. Okay. So now from here, I'm going to take two of our large rings, put them onto a small ring, and close it. Whenever you're opening a ring, you want to bring it that way. See how I'm pulling the ends apart? Actually, let me get a better view for you. I'm going to go ahead and close this one. Close this one. So, you can get a little bit of a snap whenever you close it, and you get that by pushing your, wire, your pliers in towards each other as you wiggle it back and forth. You just want to try to get as smooth and clean and tight of a connection as you can. I'm going to set that down. Now whenever you're opening a ring, you want to open it like this. That way whenever you bring those ends together again, it'll be a nice complete circle. You don't want to, if my hand is the ring, you don't want to wrench the ends apart like that. Because whenever you bring it back, you're going to have a really brittle point right here. And it's also, you're going to have a pretty difficult time getting it to be a nice, clean, good circle. Let me zoom back out. And so now we can take this laying on the table and set a ring over top of the small one in the center. And I'm actually going to pick that up by pressing my finger on it and kind of flipping it over. And I'm going to set another large ring on top so it's sandwiched. Now this is not the only way to weave this pattern. This is just how I do it. Um, if you're having difficulty, check out some of the other videos here on YouTube and maybe somebody else is teaching it in a method that works for you. But you can kind of see this same little Venn diagram space here that the horizontal ring is going through. Going to take one of our open smalls and I am going to lace through all three of those rings like that. Now right now it doesn't look like much but it will come together and close. And so I just want to bring that back around so that it's nestled over that center ring again. I'm going to pick up another small open and hook through these three, just like that. I'll need to work on that closure right there. 
and close it. And so now we have one side, but it's still floppy and doesn't really want to stay put. So where I have these two rings placed, I'm going to place those same two rings on the other side. Just threading through. Boop, one, two, and three. You want to get through all three layers. And close. And then do the same thing right there. So you're going to end up with a total of four of these rings. There we go. And close. And so this is just a nice single unit. Oops, I've messed up. You can see here it's threaded through our horizontal ring. I didn't want that to happen. So whenever you mess up, it's as easy as just opening up the ring, wiggling it out, and then repositioning it. There we go, that's much better. So this horizontal ring here is just floating freely, only threaded through the two large rings on either side whereas each of these are threaded through three rings each. Now to see that used in a piece of jewelry, you can see here I have a couple of units made just linked together with gemstone links. Now here you can see the slight variation between I have 16 gauge 1 4 inch rings for each of the sides, and then a 16 gauge 5 16 so a slightly larger ring for there in the center. And I did not include the, uh, the horizontal bar. So I mean, the ring still holds together. I just liked the nice open look of it. So there's that's always an idea. Now to turn this into a bracelet, you'll have a single unit started. Let me zoom in for you. And I'm going to take one of our open small hook right there, place a large closed and close. So now we have that going. And I'm going to do that same thing where I just layer a closed ring on either side, just sandwiched in like that. I don't necessarily recommend this as a first project. And you can see it has such a tendency to slip over here onto the side. That's okay. Just go ahead and close it. And then grab that center ring and then bring it back around. And just make sure that you have one large ring on either side of the part that you're sandwiching. But yeah, it's a I don't recommend this as a first chainmail project. Just because it does take a little bit of uh, eye plier coordination and a good understanding of kind of how rings lay. But if you feel like you want to try it, go for it. Just uh, be patient with yourself, be patient with the project. And with practice, you'll make progress. So I'm flipping it around and threading through those three and closing. Then grabbing one last small ring, threading through those three. Do, 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 those three. Right there. And closing. Now, the good news about this weave is you basically just do that thing over and over and over and over again. And that makes a very nice Celtic Vision bracelet. And again, I really like it makes a much stiffer bracelet if you double up on the horizontal ring, but I really like the way that it looks like, I mean, it's sharp. And I also feel like it holds its shape a little better, but it does make a very rigid bracelet. So if you like a little bit more movement, just go with that. There we are. 
but if you've changed your mind last minute as an artist is wont to do <laughs> um, you can go ahead and open another small ring and then just go in and kind of insert this is where the bent nose plot and that's called ping in a ring um, <laughs> it is lost to I'll find it whenever I vacuum probably um, okay so I'm gonna open another one up and this one I'm opening to an extreme almost 90 degree bend so you can kind of see there In this way, we can thread it through. Oops, can be kind of. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to go off camera. Can be kind of challenging, but you'll get it. Thread through that one. Bring it around and thread through just the one. And then close. So I really recommend adding this ring whenever it's a little easier to get in there. But if you get a couple of units in, and um, or a couple of segments in, and decide that you really want it doubled up, um, it's not impossible. You don't have to undo your work to go back. It just sometimes might be easier. <laughs> so there we go. Opening up another ring. I want to demonstrate that to you one more time. Because I find that with just one ring, it floats around too much and can get pinned in awkward ways that makes the weave not lay correctly. And so just entering in. Angle of insertion really makes a big difference here. You just have to kind of mess around until you find, you know, just the perfect way. And then it'll just slide right on through. Oops, but the rest of the time it's a bit of a pain in the neck. Um, so there we go. And there we go. I've also found that these horizontal bars, like these horizontal rings, are an excellent way to incorporate um, a color scheme. One of my favorite renditions of this bracelet is solid um, aluminum, like the silver toned aluminum with just rainbow insets, so like this would be red, and then orange, and then yellow, and then green, and then blue, and then, you know, and so on and so on. Um, but it makes it, you know, kind of subtle, just a light, a touch of color. But, yeah, that is the Celtic Visions weave. So from there, we would just continue along. This loop on the end is perfect for attaching a clasp to. So there we are. Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me during this tutorial. I hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. If you uh, follow along with my tutorials and you would like to share pictures of what you make, um, you can tag me on Instagram, or you can share them to my Back to Earth Creations uh, business Facebook page wall. Um, that way, you know, it, it helps me to be able to, uh, you know, see your work, and I think y'all do a really good job, and am I'm really impressed. Like, I am a proud teacher. Y'all do so good. So, I love it whenever I get to see what y'all make. Um, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in my fairy house giveaways, my monthly craft crates, and my digital download content, please consider following me on Patreon. Pledges start at just a dollar. Um, and a dollar may not seem like a lot to y'all, but it really does make a big difference to us. And, um, every little bit, you know? <laughs> and then also, you can follow us on Patreon without even pledging anything and still get access to some of our behind the scenes content as well as uh, participate in our community forum. So be sure to check that out. But uh, all the links to all the good stuff are down below. So until next time, guys, uh, happy crafting and I'll see you around. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>